All right, the next thing I want to talk to you about is Studio 5000 Logix Designer version 31. This is the latest version of the uh, development software for the Logix, Logix controllers. A um, lot of enhancements uh, out there to improve workflow and uh, you know, make things more efficient for you and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, what I'm going to touch on here is just some of the, some of the key features. There's a lot, lot more out there that it does, but uh, we'll hit some of the highlights here. Uh, one of the first things you'll notice is there's a common look and feel across all the 5,000 products now. Uh, the icons, the, the nomenclature, and things like that, you'll notice are similar to the other elements, like the view designer, architect, and things like that. Um, from a uh, development standpoint, in earlier versions, you know, the various editing screens pop up as separate windows. You can sort of move them around, they're hard to close and navigate and all that. The way they all work now is they all open up as tabbed uh, windows within the main work screen. So you can easily see what you've got open across the top, you can move them around, close them and things like that. It makes things much more easier for you to uh, perform your work. From a workflow standpoint, a lot of people today use multiple multi-monitors, right? You've got two big screens up there, like to be able to move your things between them and all that. Well, in version 31 now, it supports you being able to move things around the way you like to do it. So you don't have to stay within the, the confines of that main window there. One of the other features that it has is sort of a standard indication of errors. You've got an error in the code trying to go find it. Now they've got this little red circle icon with an X lets you know exactly where you need to look uh, within your code to uh, troubleshoot. For those of you that use the structured text editor and the function block, uh, that's been a criticism those programmers have had for a long time over Rockwell, that uh, Rockwell's structured text editor is rather archaic, so they need to get, get modern, bring it into the 21st century. Well, they finally have uh, moved in the right direction towards that. Uh, a lot of new features there, uh, as you can see here, uh, adding line numbers, uh, collapsible code, uh, uh, autofill code snippets, so as you start working in instruction, it sort of autofills and guides you through uh, filling out the parameters and the arguments and things like that. Uh, indenting and various things like that, you know, to make it more user-friendly, easier to read, and things of that nature. Function block editor as well, several improvements there. Um, the default screen, they've changed to 11 by 17 now, uh, and they're allowing you to auto, auto change the screen online as well. So a lot of times, I guess, you know, it's the limited size, you need to change it, you gotta take it offline. Now you can do that online. Uh, you can force the I.O. tags directly from the sheets here, as well as uh, uh, changing uh, operands directly there. So hopefully you'll find that beneficial. 31 also introduces a new type of alarm, tag-based alarm. Um, no longer do you need to write, use the instruction to create it. The instruction uh, was nice, took up a lot of memory. You have a large application with a lot of, a lot of alarms. You tended to have to get a larger controller just to handle all the alarms. Now it's a checkbox in the, the tag editor for the alarms. You manage it all there. There's no programming to write. There's nothing in the HMI, the panel view. Uh, it is, it's all delivered as a part of the factory talk alarms and event server uh, directly there. Small memory footprint, so your applications uh, will use up less memory there. And you can do bulk, bulk alarm generation, export it out to XML, uh, create them there and dump them back in. Uh, also supports the, the modularity of the code. You know add-on instructions and things like that you, that you create, now you can you know, embed those alarms in there very easily uh, and do that. 31 also introduces probably the highest level of security uh, that you can get now. Security is always an issue out there, uh, trying to do, do, do the most that you can, balance that, uh, that need with what's available. Um, what they have now is, is called license source and execution protection. Two different things here. Uh, one, the source protection has to do with the development 
of the application, who can actually get on, you know, just access it on, on your laptop directly. The other is execution for the code running out there. You know, OEMs, uh, uh, end users and all that have, you know, proprietary code out there, intellectual property, things like that, that they want to protect, who can see it, if a machine can run it. And what this protection does is it's a combination of, of two components. There's a subscription service that you have to have uh, that Rockwell manages through a website. And then there's a physical device, USB stick on the uh, uh, source protection side. You have to have that plugged into your laptop so you can actually access it and run it. Uh, and then the SD card on the execution side. You have to have a specific SD card with a license in the controller for it even to execute the code. So highest level of security available there to you, you know, sort of a, a two-part uh, security. And then the final feature I'm going to touch on is this uh, scalable safety. Uh, in the past, you know, basically the hardware you had to have supported a SIL 3 application, even though maybe you just had a SIL 2 application. Well, now you can select within the controller properties, if I'm only doing a SIL 2 application, I specify SIL 2 and then I don't have to have that second safety partner if I've got a uh, logics, uh, logics based application. Uh, saves me panel space, chassis space there, as well as you know, cost of not having to buy that card.